welcome to uh, part two of energizing and alkalizing, two concepts that are very important to understand and uh, on which our uh, health and well-being depends in, in uh, a, a major, really in a major way. Now, I have explained in our lecture before uh, about the symptoms that we will experience if we um, are, are acidic. So we mentioned a whole list of uh, uh, symptoms that will indicate that a person is acidic. Now, at the, in this lecture, I would like to uh, speak to you about some of the effects of the acidity and also toxicity in our body. I'm going to use some pictures here that are uh, all visible from the outside because usually you don't have the opportunity to look on the inside of the body. And so now, if we have a lot of acid in our body, what do you think that is going to do? Let's say you have some acid here and you pour it on my jacket. What would happen to the jacket? That's right, it would burn the tissue. And the same thing happens in our body. If we have a lot of acid in our body, then it will start to burn the body tissues. And in this case here, for example, the, the parts of our teeth, it will start to burn the teeth from the acid. And uh, then, as we have learned in our lecture about somatids, microsyma, and protids, remember that these little darts uh, turn into different kinds of bacteria or microbes, and their work is to eat up the destroyed body material. So if we damage these tissues here, for example, the teeth, part of the tooth, if we damage that with acids, then the bacteria will come and eat up this broken down material. That is their job. It's not their job to damage uh, teeth that are intact. They will not do that. They will only eat the destroyed material. But now let's say this person is getting more and more acidic and the work for the bacteria is going to increase and it cannot do the job anymore. So we need uh, a little bit more help us there for the cleanup. And the next thing that then will uh, appear is the candida or yeast. And candida or yeast is a kind of a fungus. And we can see here some different, um, some different uh, damages or issues. Like here we got a blister under the tongue. Here we got the, the corners of the, mo of the mouth. They are uh, uh, damaged, they are broken open. And here we have um, uh, like... Uh, um, uh, like a, a damaged skin, it's kind of uh, burned, and uh, here we have a damage on the on the fingernails. So um, this irritation here is typical for candida or yeast, and all these uh, uh, different uh, symptoms all indicate that the person is in a quite advanced state of acidosis. Then once these uh, um, germs or these uh, organisms can't take uh, care of the situation anymore because we get too alkaline, more and more alkal uh, sorry, we get more acidic, then the fungus will show up and will help with the cleanup. And then we get other kind of skin irritations like this here, or this horseshoe here, or we have these boils here in the face. We have uh, these brown spots under our foot nails. And then if you go to the physician, what would he do? Well, he would give you, he would recommend you some, um, 
some uh, fungicides and you would take that to try to kill these fungus. But really, what is the job of the fungus and why is he there? The fungus is there because of the acidity and uh, it is um, uh, trying to destroy tissues that have already been destroyed by the, uh, by the acidity. So it would not be very wise to fight against this fungus because uh, remember what these uh, old uh, uh, writer from the uh, Alan G. White from the 1800s, she told us that disease is an effort of the body to reverse an adverse condition that has been produced by breaking the laws of health. Now, when this fungus shows up, it doesn't mean that there is no bacteria anymore and no yeast anymore. All that's all still there. But now the situation gets worse and worse, and the person gets to a maximum state of acidosis, and then the mold will show up. And the mold, we consider that a cancer. Cancer is produced by a mold fungus. Now, wherever we have the weakest tissues in our body, whether that's in the prostate, on the liver, in the lungs, or in the stomach, wherever the tissues are the weakest, the cells are the weakest, there these acids will first destroy these cells and then the mold will come in and we get a cancer. Now, the good thing with all these here is that if we uh, get this cancer, we know that it is a result of the acidity. And if we take care now of the acidity, then this mold is reversible because the mold lives of cells that have been destroyed from a high acidosis, from a high content of acid. And if we reduce the acidity, if we start to alkalize the body, then the mold will not be able to live anymore. He will die. And then we will go back to the state of fungus. And if we alkalize our body more, then the state of fungus will also disappear and it will go back to the state of um, candida or yeast. And if we alkalize more the body, then the candida or yeast cannot live anymore either. And then it will go back to the state of bacteria. And if we now alkalize the body fully, we get to a full uh, alkalinization, we get a homeostasis in the balance of acid and base. If we get a very balanced state of acid base in our body, then this bacteria will not be able to live anymore either. And what is it going to do? Well, remember our lecture on somatids? It, they will die out and they will return into somatids. And then uh, we will be alkaline. Now, this is a wonderful news, and we, it's good to understand this, because in this way, God has given us the, 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 the capacity to heal ourselves, because we need to alkalize, and, um, and then these, uh, all these germs will not be able to live anymore in our body, because the acid is not doing any uh, damage and anymore. Well, we have seen the symptoms of the acidosis. We have seen the effects or some of the effects in the body of acidosis. And now let's have a look at the causes of all these acidity. Now, there are three different areas that will make us acidic. First, uh, let's call these... Uh, uh, these um, uh, areas disturbances. Let's call them disturbances, and uh, it can come from, from our 
uh, uh, wrong way of thinking. If we have, for example, a lot of worries or a lot of anger, if we are not in peace, then we will be producing a great amount of acidity. These way of thinking, when I think about that, it always reminds me of the first couple that God had created, Adam and Eve. And when they sinned in Eden, they uh, lost their peace with God and they got very worried and they felt bad and they felt naked and ashamed and so they were hiding. And uh, when God called them, they um, didn't even want to answer, but finally they answered him and God saw it necessary to change their diet. Why did he change their diet? Well, I believe with all my heart that they at that point became acidic. And so God added the vegetables, the grains of the field. He added them to their diet to help them to overcome the acidity. And that is probably, they are probably the best remedy against uh, acidosis. But if you get acid from an, uh, a bad way of thinking from losing peace or worries or an extreme amount of stress. This kind of acidity is so, um, so strong that it will start to destroy red blood cells. And that's really a state of acidosis where it is very difficult to get out of. You really can't get out of it with, by just using green juices. You will have to find a way how to get rid of these stress and how to make peace with the Lord and how to make peace with your family members or whoever you're fighting with. So the way of thinking is, uh, will produce a lot of acidity. Then the way of eating. If we eat the wrong way, if we eat too much uh, um, uh, protein, for example, or if we eat too many refined carbohydrates, all this will produce a lot of acidity. And then also the way of living will produce acidity. If we live in a comment, uh, uh, contaminated environment or if we live with a smoke in the house, it will produce a tremendous Tremendous amount of acidity in our bodies. Well, and here now we have a very interesting uh, cycle. Now, this cycle was also, uh, I believe, developed by Dr. Robert Young. That's his name. Now I remember it. Dr. Robert Young, he has done a lot of work in this area. And uh, he really developed this uh, a cycle of imbalance, and I love it because it really explains why older people get sick. It's beautiful. Look, we have first the disturbance, which comes from a wrong way of eating, thinking, or living. Now, these disturbances will produce acidity, and this acidity then will start to affect our environment, will start to to uh, destroy cells, and if these cells become sick and get destroyed, then we will have a development of uh, parasites that come out of the proteids that used to live in these cells. So they come out, produce parasites, and then these parasites, what they're going to do is they will start to clean up the mess inside the body. They will start to clean up the, eat up the destroyed cells. But if we have organisms that eat, they also will then have excretions. And the excretions of these organisms, remember, we learned that already, it could be things like alcohol and vinegar and, and um, all kinds of different acids and toxins. And now these, uh, these acids that are produced by these creatures here, they, in, uh, at their, uh, they at the same time turn into another disturbance. And so the cycle keeps going. Now we have another disturbance. More cells destroyed, more parasites, more acids, more disturbance. And we keep going in this cycle here 
for 50 or for 60 or for 70 or for 80 years, and there will finally be the result that we will get sick. And that's why I like uh, the, the uh, um, how should I say that, that uh, these, these, the writings of uh, these ancient writers, these Ellen G. White, her writings, and these uh, uh, scientific work here, they go hand in her hand. Because this here shows us that we get sick not because we get old, but we get sick because we have been constantly breaking the laws of health. And we're in this cycle of imbalance. So God did not make us so, so weak that we have to become sick at the end of our life. No, he didn't do that. We just live in this cycle of imbalance. Now let's say we live in this cycle of imbalance. What should we do now? to get out of it, because we definitely want, don't want to stay in this cycle. Now, probably most of you that are listening to me right now are in this cycle of imbalance. What can we do to get out of it? Well, of course, we need to break the cycle. And there are different ways to break the cycle. I used to break the cycle some years ago with a 7 to 10 day cleansing, just like I um, uh, have a lecture on internal cleansing, the seawater flush and all these things. If you go to these uh, uh, presentations, you will find how to break the cycle with a cleansing. But I don't really break the cycle of imbalance anymore with a cleansing. Because if you go on a diet, on a fast, I mean, and you go on a cleansing, the detoxing of the body will be very, very heavy. And it will be a tremendous burden for your liver because it's ultimately the liver who has to handle all these toxins and acids that are going to leave the body. So nowadays, I prefer to break the cycle with the corrective diet. And the corrective diet, you'll find it on uh, one of the CDs. And you can probably, I believe, you can print it out and then you can use it for yourself. So just use the corrective diet. Go on these uh, uh, foods the way it is recommended. And then you can break the cycle that way. Now, when you break the cycle, whether you do it with a cleansing or whether you do it with, uh, uh, with the corrective diet, you want to make sure that you break the cycle also with super hydration. We need to hydrate our bodies. I see very seldom a person that comes to me for, for counseling, I see very seldom a person that has the right amount of water in their body. A man should have around 65% and a woman should have about 60% of water in the body. And most people hardly pass 40%. So most people only have about two-thirds of the body in the water that they should have. And uh, so we need to take care that we break the cycle with super hydrating our body. And then we want to use a lot of green foods and green drinks. Now, once we start breaking the cycle with these uh, cleansing, then, of course, we need to take control. And to take control means that we need to get rid of these uh, uh, different foods that we are eating and that are not very good for our health. Now, one of these foods here would you say we should get rid of first? What shall we get rid of first, these uh, foods that we see here? Well, yes, you are right. Everything that contains sugar, we should get rid of first because sugar is worse than meat. So let's first get rid of the soda, which has a tremendous acidity, and let's get of the, rid of the ice cream. By the way, ice cream and uh, milk and sugar together will ferment in our stomach and will start to produce alcohol. And that is why 
kids and adults get so addicted to the uh, to the ice cream, besides that uh, the uh, milk contains opiumides that will be produced in our brain and will make us feel good. And then we have the alcohol in our uh, stomach. So we gave our kids an ice cream and we just made them drunk. And then later on, they want more of it. So we should get first rid of these things here. And then, of course, the next thing I would say, get rid of these hamburgers and French fries because they are extremely cancerogenic. And then we should get rid of the, the, the chicken here. But I would recommend you, if you are a housewife and if you are in control of what's happening in the kitchen, I would recommend you don't get rid of all this in one single day. Because if you go home after this lecture and you tell your husband and your kids, listen, from tomorrow on, we're just going to have green salad and baked potatoes, well, you might be home alone the next day because when lunch comes or even when breakfast comes, there may be nobody there because your kids may be eating with the neighbors and your husband may be eating with his uh, maybe girlfriend or whoever. All right, so uh, you want probably to be a little bit careful when you start taking control. Don't overdo it. Take control little by little. But we have to take control because if not, why are we cleansing our body? Wouldn't make any, any sense, right? Now, after we have con taken control, then we need to start to provide. And we need to provide good foods, good nutritional, natural foods. We need to provide water. We need to provide uh, fresh air. We need to pro provide rest. All these things need to be provided. So we, take we, uh, we, we break the cycle. We take control. And then we provide. And once we do these, take these three steps, then we are suddenly in the cycle of balance. And now also what I like here is the word cycle of balance. It is not a step of balance. It is a cycle of balance because you constantly keep cleansing your body. You constantly want to do uh, certain things. Like I told you, I like to cleanse my body about every two months or so. So if you do several cleansing a year, that would be very nice. So you keep cleansing and you keep taking control because there's always something else that you should really get rid of in your kitchen. And then you also Keep providing because to provide is also a development because you will not just be able to go out there and say, well, we got rid of all this stuff and now I'm going to be a vegan cook. Well, most of you aren't and uh, we don't even want to cook so much food. We only want to use about 25% of our food cooked. The rest should be raw, but we don't have these experience how to produce these raw foods. So we need to learn about this. And so we will always provide better and better and better. And we will take control more and more and more. And we keep, keep cleansing. And then you will be in this cycle of balance. And once you get into this cycle of balance, it's really beautiful. Because the same thing will happen to you as happened to me. When I was 45 years old, I had a hard time tying my shoes because I was quite overweight and I was very inflexible because I never did any physical work or anything like that. I would just sit in the office and, and to go to a bar and drink beer and, and vodka and all this kind of good stuff at that time. Now I don't consider it good anymore. But uh, so I was in a very bad health when I was about 40 to 45 years old, I had a liver cirrhosis, high blood pressure, overweight, uh, the, um, affected nervous system, and all kinds of different things. And the doctors told me that if I would not make some serious changes, that I would not live very long. And that's why I came to the U.S., because I wanted to learn here how to live healthy, because I had heard 
about the longest living people on earth. And they live right in this country in Loma Linda in California. And I studied the techniques that they use to maintain themselves young and healthy and they outlive other regular people by 9 to 12 years. So once I learned about all these things, I got into this cycle, and instead of getting older and older, I'm getting younger and younger and younger. And really, at this point, I I feel like a little kid that is like uh, 10 years old and can't wait to get 15. I'm 72 right now, and I can't wait to get 80 because I know I will be feeling great when I'm 80 years old. And it is a pride to to uh, be of an advanced age, but you have all the energy of a young person. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And so uh, it's so exciting. And that's one of the reasons why I'm sharing all these things here with you. So let's get into this cycle of balance and let's get younger and younger and younger and healthier and healthier and healthier. Now, I want to share again something with you because I want to make sure that you understand this point here about alkalizing. A soda has a pH of 2.8, and that's what it will produce in your body. Now let's say it's 3. If you want to get your pH, your metabolic pH, up to 8 because you want to get out of the state of acidosis, then look, you want to get from 3 to 4 is 10 times more alkaline, to 5, 100 times, 6, a thousand times, seven, ten thousand times, and to eight, you need to be a hundred thousand times more alkaline than what a soda makes you. So please stop drinking these sodas and all these artificial drinks that are out there. They will make you extremely um, acidic and you will never get to a balanced pH of seven to 7.5. Here we have another little scale. I got again my soda here. The coffee is in the same area. The beer is, and all liquor is very acidic. Then uh, all animal products are quite acidic. And look what is very alkaline. Broccoli, spinach, all these vegetables, they're extremely alkaline. So let's eat the things that are on the right side of the neutral uh, uh, a number of uh, uh, a pH of 7 that are to the right because to the right everything is alkaline, to the left everything is acidic. So let's eat the right thing so that we will get out of the state of acidosis. Christ, the great medical missionary, is our example. He healed the sick and preached the gospel. He is cert- In his service, healing and teaching were linked closely together. Today, they are not to be separated. So if you want to be out there preaching the gospel of salvation, you should take in consideration the work that Christ did. He went out there and he healed. And he said that we can do greater things than he, can, than he did. And we can study about health. Learn what I've been teaching you here. And you will see how many people you will be able to help besides yourself. Because most of you uh, uh, do need healing yourselves. Now, what is our calling? What's the calling that Jesus has given us? He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. To preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. That's in Luke chapter 9 and verse 2. To preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So it is very important that we Uh, really uh, go out there and help the sick people because God does not want anybody to be sick. He wants us to be of good health and prosperous. And what is his promise if we do obey him? He said, and lo, I am with you always, 
even unto the end of the world. Amen. What a beautiful promise. Jesus will be with us if we do his work. But his work is not only preaching. His work is preaching and healing the sick. That's what he wants us to do. Now, we are asked to be doers of the word and not only hearers of the word. Let's become doers. Said my guide, educate, educate, educate. The mind must be enlightened for the understanding of the people is darkened. Satan can find access to the soul through perverted appetite to debase and destroy it. Dear fellow Christians, brothers and sisters, please understand that Satan will find access to the soul through perverted appetite. We have to overcome self, and we need to learn how to do that. Nearly every family needs to be instructed in this point. Nearly every person needs to have his conscience aroused to become a doer of the word of God, practicing self-denial and abstaining from the unlawful indulgence of appetite. This is from the book of evangelism. Now, we need to become doers of the word by abstaining from un. Uh, lawful indulgence of appetite and by overcoming self. And all families need to be instructed in these areas. So once you have understood the teaching of all these health lectures, please go and teach your neighbors, teach your friends, your family members. Go and distribute the, dis the, the DVDs wherever you can if you have them already. So, in uh, the study of surgery and other medical science receives much attention in the world. And that's true, because we put the doc doctors up there, surgery and uh, all these uh, medical science, we put it up there. What do they do? Can they heal us from a simple diabetes? No, they can't. Can God heal us from these things? Oh, yes, he can, and he does all the time. But the true science of medical missionary work carried forward as Christ carried it is new and strange to the denominational churches and to the world. It is new to the world and also to, the, to all the denominational churches. It's new to them how Christ healed. Well, they know that he did, but they don't know that we have the knowledge to do the same thing as he has done. But it will find its rightful place when as a people who have had great light, Seventh-day Adventists awaken to their responsibilities and improve their opportunities. Now, once the Adventist people would wake up to their responsibilities, these health messages, these knowledge about health would really enlighten the world and would make a dip, big difference in the lives of many people. But we need that these poor uh, or dear Seventh-day Adventists, uh, that they wake up because they have a responsibility received from God and they need to take care of this uh, work that they are supposed to do. And here is a solemn warning. And I believe that the work is not only for Seventh-day Adventists. I believe this work is also for every Christian because if you want to do Christ's work, if you want to do God's work, you're supposed to heal the people and not only preach the gospel. If church members do not act the part God has assigned them, the movement of health reform will go on without them and it will be seen that God has removed their candlestick out of its place. Now, if 
you know about this message of health and you do not act on it, you don't go and use it yourself and teach it to others, then God will take away the candlestick out of your life. And who is this candlestick? It's Jesus. How, what are we going to do and how we're going to see without him if he is the light? So we have a beautiful promise here. And this is why I keep going with all this work, even though sometimes it can become quite difficult. But we shall see the medical missionary work broadening and deepening at every point of its progress because of the inflowing of hundreds and thousands of streams. And the whole earth is covered as the waters cover the sea. So this is a beautiful promise. These medical missionary work, healing others with the message of health that God has given us. This work will go forward until it will cover the whole earth as the waters cover the seas, the oceans. Now, how many dry spots are there in the oceans? Well, there are a few islands in there, and that's all. So imagine that this work that you are learning and hearing about right now, this work will go and cover the whole earth as the waters cover the oceans. Thank you and God bless you. 